Department of Defense is updating its requirements to join the military. Here's what they're doing. The DOD says anyone who's been hospitalized with COVID-19 will be disqualified from serving. <laughs> Right now, the military is tightening up the screening process. For anyone who's been hospitalized with COVID-19, DOD spokeswoman Jessica Maxwell says they'll be medically disqualified and need a service waiver to join. We asked Maxwell to elaborate on this guidance, including what's needed to get a waiver and the current screening process. Yeah. She didn't answer those questions. Yeah, so a big question we've been asking is what about current service members who've been hospitalized for COVID-19? What will happen to them? CBS is reporting that they aren't going to be automatically disqualified for continued service, but they could have to go before a medical review board. This COVID-19 not only has affected our population in the United States, being included, it has affected our military. So much that the Pentagon even decided to tell them, the officials, the generals, or anyone that's releasing press release, um, to not give too many statistics to the public because of national security, of readiness. Check this video out. Obviously, it's having an impact like it is everywhere else in the nation. That doesn't mean that we're not prepared and we're not working actively like most Americans are to mitigate this thing. On March 30th, the Washington Post reported that according to anonymous defense officials, between 20 and 50 positive cases have been confirmed at the Marine Corps Recruit Depot in Paris Island, South Carolina, where about 20,000 Marine recruits graduate from a 13-week training program every year. We did have an uh, increase in COVID cases among our recruit population. Based on that, we had everyone they were in contact with already in quarantine, so they were quarantined immediately. With the number of confirmed cases rising, the Pentagon ordered individual military bases to stop providing specific numbers of COVID-19 cases to the press and public out of a concern for operational security with regard to readiness. Captain McDonald. Hey, Captain McDonald, this is Graham Flanagan. We spoke on the phone with Recruit Depot spokesperson, Captain Brian McDonald, about how the COVID-19 crisis is impacting recruits during training. COVID is very serious. We're taking it seriously, as is the rest of the DOD, but it's one element of uncertainty in a world that has more factors than that, for sure, which is why the Marine Corps exists. The footage of training in this video was shot when we visited Paris Island in October of 2019. Get on the yellow footprints right now. Now, amid the crisis, all incoming recruits undergo a 14-day staging period before they set foot on the yellow footprints. During staging, they are medically screened multiple times a day. Regardless of whether someone's asymptomatic or not, when they arrive on the depot, they'll be in a holding pattern for two weeks until uh, they come out clear on the other side of that. But new recruits won't be arriving at Paris Island for at least a week. As of March 30th, the shipment of new recruits is temporarily suspended. According to the Recruit Depot, new physical distancing measures are being implemented. Like in the squad bays where recruits sleep, there must now be six feet in between each rack or bed. Recruits also practice physical distancing in the chow hall, where more space is being opened up and utilized for recruits to safely eat their meals. But training will go on. And as you can see from these pictures taken on March 24th, some exercises require close physical contact, like martial arts. According to McDonald, physical distancing is being implemented in training at the discretion of the instructors. There are folks in various stages of training that have been here for weeks. It's been assessed based on medical input and various other factors that their overall risk of COVID exposure is quite low relative to folks who are coming out of the depot. But people also need to be trained how to fight, how to shoot, how to swim, to do all those things that, that we do as Marines. Graduations like this one will continue to occur but they're closed to all visitors. According to McDonald, physical distancing will be implemented in
into marching formations with space between each graduate. Following graduation, the new Marines will ship out of Paris Island and head to the training that subsequently occurs on other bases. Companies currently on the depot right now, the plan is that they will continue to train in a modified and responsible way. COVID is one uncertain factor in a world full of uncertainties, which is why we have a Marine Corps. So it's definitely important to us that we take care of our recruits. It's certainly not easy, but I would attest that it's not easy for most folks around America trying to figure out how to grapple with this. Um, I also wanted to show you guys this. Uh, this is from Vice News. It's not mine, but I, I really didn't hear about this. This is crazy. Look, uh, these um, the security firm or, or like a oh, you know what? I'm gonna just play the video. This is this is crazy. Venezuela's president Nicolas Maduro says 13 people, including two Americans, are in custody for trying to oust him. Yo jugando al Rambo, al héroe. Six people were killed during the failed incursion Sunday, according to Venezuelan officials. The armed men were intercepted trying to enter Venezuela by boat from Colombia. Silver Corps USA, a Florida-based security firm, claimed responsibility for organizing the attempted invasion. The company is run by Jordan Gaudreau, a former Green Beret. 1,700 hours, a daring amphibious raid was launched from the border of Colombia deep into the heart of Caracas. Man. Media, he was hired by Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido, who was supposed <laughs> to pay him $212 million for his services. Guaido denies any involvement. Maduro accused the United States and Colombia of orchestrating the plot, but both countries denied involvement. We'll find out. We just heard about it. Uh, but whatever it is, we'll let you know. But it has nothing to do with our government. Gaudreau has claimed Silver Corps USA provided security for a Trump rally in 2018. And on the day of the failed coup attempt, the company tweeted at the president. Since then, they have been mocked on social media for the failed operation. That's messed up. So, these guys were going to basically bring down, bring down Maduro with one squad and then got intercepted by their army. Venezuelan. I don't even know if it's the army or the police, but it would be so embarrassing if it was just the police. Like this is this is kind of what do you mean kind? Of? This is embarrassing. That's messed up. By Wednesday, Silver Core USA deleted their Twitter account. Man, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> Check that out. That's, that was like five, a week ago, five days ago that they posted this video. But that's from like May 5. It's crazy. I didn't hear about that. Did you guys hear about that? Man. Hey, everybody. So recently, and I'm talking about very recently, on April 24th, they found the USS Nevada in the Pacific Ocean. Well, the wreckage of it. Check it out. Video is silent, it's muted. There is no audio. I can't believe they found it. They don't even show the coordinates, you know, the easting, northing. Look at that. Somewhere in the Pacific, this wreckage was found as a tank. Alright, I think that's, that's about it. Alright, so that ship that we were just watching, this... This is this is a story on that ship right there. So it was involved in the World War Two. It won seven battle stars, and it was sunk July thirty first, nineteen forty eight. It was nicknamed the Cheer Up Ship. A little bit of um, information on that wreck on that USS Nevada warship wreckage. <laughs>